Hey guys, it's me, the King Drag Puppies here, and I'm here today doing Freaky Friday! Boo! And today we will be talking about the Duarku from Ireland, and it is Irish. That's why the name, yeah. So I got three things to read from. We've got the Cryptid Creatures Field Guide. We've got Cryptozoology A to Z. And we've got right here on my laptop the um, Cryptozoology um, Wiki Fandom uh, post on it. So yeah. And uh, I might mispronounce it sometimes because I was always used to calling it Departu because that's how it's spelled. It's D-O-B-H-A-R dash C-H-U. So I always thought it was Departu, but it's Duarku, which I think Departu sounds a lot scarier than Duarku. But what do I know? Anyways, let's get started with the cryptid wiki fandom post. The, Debar the Duarku is a giant carnivorous lake monster that lives in Ireland. The most consistent ancient description is of a great otter. Duarku's other names are Duarchu, Dobarku, Dugaru, Sea Dog, or the Irish Crocodile. Now, Duarku, I'm pretty sure, translates to water dog in Irish. So, yeah. Duarku have been reported for a long time since ancient Ireland. They are said to be very aggressive to humans and dogs. Um, they were said to attack in groups or pairs. First one Duarku will attack. If it fails, then its companions will rush in to attack too. They will follow prey through water and onto land. That's very interesting. So, these things were known for attacking people and the reports... There were many, but um, right on the wiki, <laughs> there's a gallery, and one of the pictures is the Pokemon Vaporeon, so, okay. But um, the for sightings, modern-day Duarku are very rare or maybe even extinct, but it is said that the Duarku can still be found on a chill island west of County Mayo. County Mayo, oh, wow. On this island, there is a lake. Sranheen's Low. I'm butchering the crap out of that. But the Dogarku are said to live there for now. The first modern sighting noted in a description of West Canal by Roderick O'Flaherty. Another report in 2003 was made by Irish artist Sean Corcoran and his wife of a Dogarku in Omi Island, Conamara. They reportedly saw a giant creature with dark coloring and membranes on the feet to swim. There is, interestingly, an archaeological remnant called the Kinlo Stone. That is the gravestone of a woman who was killed by a Dwarku in the 17th century. So, they straight up have a grave of a woman who was killed by one of these things. So, I mean, I think there had to have been something that killed her or maybe she killed herself we don't know but this here is telling me that there had to have been something for this many sightings and this many attacks that's insane but her name was Grayan Grane Grane probably another grave site is the Glen Glenade stone found in Conwall graveyard where there is a Dwarku figure carved on the gravestone so that probably means they were killed too. How wonderful. But yeah, that's all for the Cryptid Wiki fandom. They didn't really have much information. But um, we'll read the Cryptozoology A to Z last. Because I'm pretty sure that had some of the most information. Even though it's maybe only a page worth of this book. So let's go to the Cryptids and Creatures field guide. It was first reported in 1684. Like... <laughs> I can't even put my finger around that, put, wrap my head around that, because that was, like, so long ago. And it was in, uh, the, the location of it was Crevelia, Ireland, but they were found in many other places. It was, um, said to be aquatic and otter-like, of course, but for the reality rating here, it, um, says three stars. And the pronunciation in this actually says departure, which... Duarku 
departure. My brain! Anyways, the factoid, Ireland's Hound of the Deep depart Departure has a history more than 350 years long, but some local immigrants believe the man-eating beast followed them from Ireland to the United States to wreak havoc in Lake Erie by a new name, Lake Monster Bessie. Now, that is an actual sea monster, and we can actually, I can find that in the Cryptozoology A to Z book if, and talk about it real quick. But Irish journalist Ra Rachel Rafferty told the story of Debart Departure, my gosh! On a website known as Ireland of the Welcomes, while her story is detailed, it's difficult to validate its credibility. Rafferty suggests that departure means waterhound and looks like a cross between an oversized otter and a dog, roughly seven feet long. It is rumored to live in and around the lakes of the British Isles and is sometimes considered the Irish cousin of Scotland's Loch Ness Monster. That's interesting. Um, historic eyewitness accounts suggest Departure has a taste for human flesh and the speed and agility to cut prey down with ease. They often live in pairs, and if one is wounded or killed, the other will avenge its partner by going after the human assassin. Grace Canali of the Creavilia, Ireland, allegedly saw the beast on September 22, 1722. While washing her clothes in the lake, the monster sprang out of the water and killed the woman. Her husband, Terence, drew his dagger to end the creature's life. As the departure died, it allowed a scream to alert its mate, which came to avenge its partner. Terence jumped on his horse, but the departure continued the chase on dry land. A blacksmith in a nearby town told Terence to stop running and use a sword to kill the giant beast. He took the advice and dispatched the second departure as he had the first. Grace Canali's gravestone still stands in the Conwell Cemetery in the town of Drummond's Ireland. That is the woman that we were talking about on the wiki fandom, so that was the story. That's very interesting. Um, it is said that um, the departure that killed her is carved in the headstone's face. The departure bodies are allegedly buried nearby in the Sligo region of Ireland. A most recent eyewitness account took place in 2003 when artist, Irish artist Sean Corcoran and his wife crossed the departure's path in Nome Island, Conamara, which also talked about in the wiki fandom. We had come across this island by pure accident, he said. But as soon as we found Omei, we were hooked. We spent an eventful few weeks puttering around the island by day and lounging by campfire at night. It was a very peaceful day until something strange happened. As Kokorin and his wife slept, a strange noise erupted. I strapped on my little head torch and we crept out in the pitch black. We heard a vicious snarl, a loud hiss, and a huge splash. I tried my best to keep my head, my head steady to see what it was. It swam the width of the lake from west to east in what seemed like seconds. It moved quietly, but left a fairly big wake. When the mystery creature got to the other side of the lake, it climbed onto a boulder and stared at the young couple. It turned, stood up on its hind legs, and gave the most haunting screech. Its body was dark, about the size of a large Labrador, about five foot tall standing. Gosh, that's tall. Like, I'm six foot, so this thing is almost... It's probably to my shoulders. That's, that's kind of scary. Um, then it disappeared into the darkness. When they shared the story with local residents, the Kokorans were told they'd seen a local legend, the mysterious departure. Now, real quick, we can take a look at Bessie. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. It is not in this book. So, let's look at the cryptozoology A to Z. Do, 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 do. And... It looks like it is, and it's page 36. So in there, it talked about how maybe it went to America and took on the name Bessie. So Bessie, for some time, people had been reporting of an unknown creature later nicknamed South Bay Bessie or just plain Bessie in Lake Erie. It is described as gray, snake-like, and 30 to 40 feet long. Those sightings have been logged in recent years. The, most, the monster is known mostly from historical accounts. So... It, 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 Bessie was described as being snake-like, while the park chew was otter-like. And yet they still said it was like it went to America. So that doesn't sound right, does it? But that was just a brief description of it. So now let's go on to what the Depart chew is about in the Cryptozoology A to Z book. And then we'll call it there. So... 
Among the legendary beasts of Ireland is something called the Depart Shoe, the Gaelic word for waterhound, a mysterious and dangerous creature said to dwell in some lakes. The very sight of one is rumored to cost a witness his or her life. That is something new that we hadn't heard from. Now, this book was made in the 1900s, so and some if I were to do episodes on some cryptids, there might not they might not be in this book because of how old it is. And so it also tells us a little bit more about older cryptids and stuff we didn't know because it was made back then. So it also says um, these waterhounds figure not just in oral tradition but also in claimed experiences from earlier centuries. Bearing stark testimony to the waterhound's bloodthirsty nature is a great sight in Glenaid country Latrim. The epitaph notes the death of a woman named Grace. The last name is no longer discernible. On September 27, 1722, what we read about earlier. On the tombstone is the carving of an unidentified animal with some features of an otter run through with a spear. The woman is said to have been killed by a water hound as she was washing clothes in the nearby Glenade Lake. What we heard about in the other book. When her husband found her bloody clothes with a water hound lying on them, he plunged a knife into the animal's heart. That we didn't hear about. And it also sounds a little too good to be true, because he's like, oh, I know exactly where the heart is on this animal I've never seen before. Stab! Okay. Okay, buddy. The creature made a whistling sound, and another animal, just like it, appeared in the lake, swam swiftly toward the husband, and chased him and a friend who fled on horseback. Eventually, they turned on the creature and stabbed it to death before it could harm either of them. That holds up to the other story. This is a colorful local legend. As early as 1684, Roderick O'Flaherty, author of the book on his Irish rambles, noted stories of an Irish crocodile that witnesses often mistook as, at least initially, for an otter. So, maybe that's where the crossover from Bessie to um, Departure meets, because he claims it is like a crocodile the, other than an otter, which a crocodile is more similar to a snake than an otter is to a snake, so I can kind of see it now. Um... It um, also says, um, the creature once attacked a man who managed to hit it on the head with a rock and then cut it with a knife, scaring it away. Similar beasts of Flattery Road had been observed in other Irish lakes. They call it doyarchu, i.e. water dog or anchu, which is the same thing. One witness said it had the color of an ordinary gra greyhound and black slimy skin without hair. Ooh. Dave Walsh, an Irish Slough Lake monster investigator, visited the gravesite and investigated the Dabharchu. He felt the identification of the Dabharchu with the family, fairly shy otter, which can be found at lengths of over 5 feet 6 inches, including the tail. Seemed to be by default, no other known Irish water creature comes as close to a rational zoological explanation. Its general resemblance to an otter... Notwithstanding, it seems clear it could not have been one of these shy, unaggressive animals. The departure does not seem to have been a lake monster in the relatively speaking conventional sense. Walsh asks whether we can accept the departure as a hungry lake serpent that grows legs occasionally when it feels like eating. Now that I ha find hard to believe. He's basically saying, oh, it's a sea serpent that looks like an otter and could grow legs when it wants to eat. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I just don't get it. No encounters with water hounds have been reported in a long time. If these creatures had any existence outside the Im, Im, a little, oh my god, in outside the imagination, it is hard to figure out what they could have been. Now, it's time. It's the time in um, these videos where I go over what I think. So, I would say that there's a good chance there was something out there that did kill these people because something had to been going on for all these sightings to go on and for so long, the time span. Because, you know, some cryptids do date back a long time ago, but, you know, this is one of the stories that is still going on to this day. And I can only think of a few cryptids that go on for that long. And for it to go all the way to the 1600s that's insane so i think there was definitely something out there i don't think it was a creature that if you were to look at it once it would immediately try and kill you or was a crocodile or was some kind of creature that could pop out its legs whenever it wanted to eat 
I think it could have been, maybe, there were otters, I'm, I believe, in the prehistoric ages that were huge. Now, I don't know if they are considered carnivores. I mean, I guess they eat fish. So I guess that can count for something. But I don't know. Because in the book, they're said to be the size of a Labrador. And then also 5 feet 5 inches tall. So it kind of depends, I feel like. Maybe it was like a subspecies that adapted to its environment. Like animals do. And, um, you know... Why aren't we seeing them today? Well, this could be a number of things. Maybe it's because it was a different animal that has now been discovered. Because that's been the case for, like, manatees, they say, were what maybe what was thought to be mermaids and stuff like that. And so it's really, it's kind of just up to opinion, really, if you believe it or not now. It was a local tradition and a story passed down from generations. So I could see like different tribes and stuff talking about it with their families and stuff. And then they get passed down. So really, it's a mystery to me. I don't know what to believe. Um, and yeah, that's all I have to say really. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification button so you never miss another video. And... Let me know in the comments down below what cryptid you want to see next Friday for Freaky Friday. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye! Rawr!